Well, I have always been interested since my high school times in philosophy, for instance, besides physics, obviously. Uh, and so I started already on the right line, say, of uh, uh, trying to understand the basic foundation of modern science. Then I had a very important experience because I got my degree at the University of Milan, which I believe that in those times, I am quite old, so it's a lot of time ago, uh, it was the only place in Italy in which there was a group working on foundation of quantum mechanics. Uh, and this group was made by Daneri, Loinger and Prosperi, who had proposed something that they considered the solution of everything. So stimulated by them, I understood that quantum mechanics had some problems. I tried to understand if I convinced myself that their solution was not a solution. And then I went on along these lines. Well, quantum mechanics is for sure uh, the best theory that uh, scientists have elaborated up to now. However, it is affected differently for many other theories, typically the classical theory, let us say Newtonian mechanics or electromagnetism. It is affected by a strange attitude that due to the strangeness of the quantum world that we cannot understand with our standard ideas, let us say, they worked out a theory and uh, the founding father have taken the attitude that what physics is about is not the world around us, but is the information that we can have about the world. So uh, from this point of view, uh, quantum mechanics is a wonderful theory. Most of the technological advancement of the last century <laughs> or something like that come from quantum mechanics. But from a logical and foundational point of view, is uh, something which deserves and requires actually to be more deeply investigated. Well, uh, quantum physics uh, has made very, very clear that uh, um, in nature there is randomness. And uh, the randomness of quantum mechanics is rather different from the randomness in other aspects of physics, for instance, in thermodynamics, statistical mechanics. There, there is randomness, for instance, if you don't know exactly what will do some molecule in a gas, just because you don't know the behavior of 10 to the 24 particles in the gas or something like that. On the contrary, quantum mechanics assume that the randomness is intrinsic, so it is not due to your ignorance of the actual condition of the thing or to, your or to your ability to solve the equations, but nature is fundamentally random. So when you put the question to the, to the nature, essentially you can have different answers and these are governed by probabilistic laws. Uh, well, this is an important discovery, even though I cannot avoid the mentioning that there are version interpretation or better completion of quantum mechanics like Bohmian mechanics, which are fully deterministic and equivalent to it. So it's not that this is the basis of all the prediction of quantum mechanics. However, I have a particular attention now to the probabilistic structure of the theory because I think that one way, which is the way that we have proposed to overcome the basic difficulties I was mentioning before is just to increase the randomness of quantum mechanics, so introduce new stochastic elements in the description of the world. Well, the implication of Bell inequalities, the fundamental implication of Bell inequalities, which make of Bell work one of the most important of the second half of the past century, let us say, is the derivation of this inequality, which proves unambiguously that natural processes are fundamentally non-local. If you allow me something which is a little bit imprecise, something that you do here has an instantaneous effect at a distance, in such a way that you cannot use this game in order to send signals at the velocity greater than the one of the light. 
And in my opinion, this is the fundamental role and uh, um, lesson that John Bell has given us concerning natural processes. Uh, I must stress that uh, there is not a complete understanding of Bell from many, many scientists, even involved in foundational problems. For instance, you will find many people telling that in order to confront yourself with the, the implication of Bell's inequality, you have either to give up realism or <laughs> locality. This is an absolutely crazy thing. Bell inequality has nothing to do with realism. What Bell's inequality proves is that nature is causally not local. Well, the role of philosophy, in my opinion, is absolutely basic because I think that the real purpose of science, at least the one for which I love doing science, is that it represents an attempt to understand how the world around us is ruled. And uh, th this is absolutely important, that is to say, to understand what uh, what Einstein was saying, I want to give a look at God's card, the rest are details. It means really to understand how the world has been ruled, essentially. So I am not denying, obviously, the extremely important implication of science for our daily life, all the technological improvements which have been possible due to science. But in my opinion, it is very important to keep in mind that uh, uh, what we are looking for is a better comprehension of the world. And I would like to stress that, for instance, one of the papers of Einstein, which has given rise to bell inequality, among other things, and all the recent most important development of quantum mechanics, has been judged by the Copenhagen orthodoxy and by many physicists as just due to his philosophical prejudices. He wanted object to be really in some place, for instance, in space and time, and he was not satisfied with the quantum view in which some object cannot, can have not a definite position. Well, the most pressing problems are those that I have mentioned at the beginning and which affect quantum mechanics since its birth. <laughs> that is to say, to reconcile the two contradictory evolution law that it contains. One is the deterministic evolution law governed by the Schrodinger equation, and the other is what happens when you make a measurement. So again, you see here, the observer coming in, your will of making a measurement. So you are not speaking of something which exists out there, but something that you are trying to investigate. Uh, so this is the most fundamental problem. Uh, I would not dare to say that there are very precise ways to overcome this problem. There is no doubt that both Bohmian mechanics and collapse theories uh, are steps in the direction of uh, overcoming these difficulties of the theory. However, I, I really don't feel <laughs> confident in saying that this is the right way. Probably people working in quantum gravity or something like that will find a better way. Uh, there is no doubt that, for instance, our approach since, as when I have said before, that we have added the, a new stochastic and probabilistic element to the theory. Essentially, our theory agrees with all what has been, uh, all the experiments which have been done in order to test quantum mechanics, but it has some slight, very slight deviation from it. So, for instance, you could take what we have done as a, an attempt to uh, outline a line of research which might lead to a crucial test between quantum mechanics and something which is not quantum mechanics, which are collapse models, for instance.